To say her language was not diplomatic would be an understatement of understatements. <laughs> I can still remember the surprise in Jerry's face when Mo verbally let fly at him and a strong voice. Harsh words were exchanged before calmness prevailed and everyone got down to diplomacy. But it was a, an instructive moment for all of us, but especially Jerry. And just in case anyone had any doubt, it was clear that Mo Mullen was not a politician uh, to be um, trifled with. Uh, she was able to uh, hit it hard. I remember another day when uh, she was just so frustrated and this stage wasn't as well as um, on chemotherapy, and, uh, but was still putting in a full day uh, working hard, listening to the endless arguments, debate. Uh, she marched in, it was a meeting of the leaders and, uh, to try and cut the meetings <coughs> down. Uh, it was just the leaders of every party in Northern Ireland. You have a lot of uh, leaders of parties, big, small and, and indifferent. Uh, the only female in the room was the leader of the Women's Coalition. Uh, thankfully, they agreed to have a woman leader of the Women's Coalition, which is a great <laughs> achievement in Northern Ireland. But anyway, <laughs> other than that, it was all uh, men. And uh, Mo came in, knew that she was going to live with all the nonsense, uh, again, to put it politely. Uh, she pulled off the wig, dumped it on the table, kicked off one shoe right, other shoe left, plonked down uh, in the chair and said, now what the hell you F ambassadors have to say to me? <laughs> uh, I always used to love the uh, minute taker of these meetings. I when the, the rules uh, will be read in about 25 years, what they will actually say. But all these minute takers will probably say that the Secretary of State Committee was very annoyed, you know, but she used to. I can't tell you all the things that she would say because I'd be in trouble. But this year marks uh, Students, the 60th anniversary is of Mo's birth. I mean, she's dead four years, but <coughs> she was only uh, 56 years of age. And in preparing for this speech, I came to realise that it also marks the 200th anniversary of the birth of another great British statesman, William Gladstone. And Gladstone, on first being elected Prime Minister, said that his great political objective was to pacify Ireland. That the highest compliment that I can uh, pay Mo uh, at this um, particular debate and of course Tony Blair uh, is to say that their inspired work was a central uh, to finally achieving uh, Gladstone's great objective. <coughs> I don't think there's many conflicts around the world, there are some, but not many, uh, that so many people put so much effort in. But it is true to say that William Gladstone uh, started off at uh, Thug uh, to uh, the period of Mo Mullen uh, to bring to completion. Uh, and if it was not for the way that she went about that, uh, I do not believe I would be here tonight saying that. And uh, what we set out to do, when I say we, I just don't mean Tony, Mo and I. I mean everyone who joined with us along the difficult journey. John Hume, uh, David Trimble, who both won Nobel Peace Prizes, the late David Irvine, Martin McGuinness and so many others was to find a common thread which binds us all together. And in the end, uh, we found this, and we, the Irish and British people, have begun to wave a new history, uh, which is a history which is built on simple principles of cooperation and understanding, fraternity, and a willingness to celebrate the diversity of the islands <coughs> and of these islands. The Good Friday Agreement, President, which we were so proud to negotiate, says it best, and I want to just give one quote from it, that the tragedies of the past have left a deep and profoundly regrettable legacy of suffering. We must never forget those who have died or been injured, but we can best honour them through a fresh start in which we firmly dedicate ourselves to the achievement of reconciliation, tolerance and mutual trust, and the protection and vindication of the human rights of all. That is what the Good Friday Agreement was about. Uh, it was a complex agreement, uh, but that was the, the principle. And peace in Ireland, President, in our generation, uh, is our proudest achievement. And the real winners are the people north and south who can now live together uh, in harmony. Um, I watch with, with great sadness uh, every day the, the Sky and BBC World and other reports of the, uh, the, the tragedies in Afghanistan and, and other tragedies in the world. And I uh, watch the, the number of lives lost and uh, this remembrance uh, weekend. That obviously, I, I add my sympathy. Uh, present to uh, all of those who've lost their lives and, and my um, sympathies to all of those families and because it is something that 
and we in Northern Ireland uh, learns to uh, to live with. And uh, I watched the debate uh, about the, the conflicts and uh, and you know now yesterday 200 people being being killed. But uh, it does make me remember too that uh, there were uh, multiples of 200 British soldiers killed in Northern Ireland as part of the three and a half thousand people uh, that died uh, in the Troubles. And uh, sometimes it amazes me how people can forget and, and move on. <coughs> Uh, I think of all of those families of, of the three and a half thousand, but particularly here tonight to say of the, of the British soldiers who died, died in, in Northern Ireland. And um, uh, to say that uh, that was a conflict um, when it hit 200 that they were wasting their time with or, or couldn't bring an end or their contribution uh, wasn't important to it with everybody else. It was just not true. Um, sometimes to, uh, to bring peace to future generations and to millions of people uh, does take uh, time and does take hardship and I do think people uh, need to have a, uh, a, a sense of respect of, of, about these things. But three and a half thousand people uh, died in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is a very small place. It was in the typical American city because I used to make this speech in America uh, during the Troubles. Uh, it would have been equivalent to somewhere between 40 and 50 uh, thousand people uh, would have died in, in the Troubles in, in Northern Ireland. And, Peace was hard won, and it took much persevering through the, the bad old days of the Troubles. And there were some horrific days of carnage. Uh, Mo Mullen and I witnessed at first hand the grief and devastation uh, that the Oma bombing inflicted uh, on many families uh, that are part of 40 people, including a, a pregnant uh, woman, uh, were, were blown to pieces on that day. Um, and uh, I remember walking those streets uh, with Mo Emma. I remember going to the casualty wards, uh, I remember going to the morgues uh, and seeing the devastation. And I remember hardest of all uh, going to the houses uh, of the innocent peoples whose kid children uh, were going to, uh, on a summer trip, um, were going to uh, get some of their school books at the start of term uh, in August 15, the 310 in Oma, uh, that were blown apart. And I think the violence in Northern Ireland was horrific and uh, we cannot uh, forget that and again always to say from wherever side uh, that it came. Uh, but Mo never uh, shivered at any of that, uh, saw the bigger picture and the bigger picture was to stay at it uh, and to keep working. Uh, Edmund Burke, President, the great 18th century Irish statesman, uh, once famously said, uh, for evil to triumph, uh, it's enough for good men to do nothing. Uh, thankfully, in our time, good people from all communities did not do nothing. Uh, the people refused to be uh, deflected from the noble goal of peace through, uh, though faced with enormous challenges and a whole uh, legacy of bitter history. Mo Mullen was central to this. She understood that for peace to flourish, dialogue is necessary. She also understood that it needs to be seen to, to be even-handed. Her style was of help. Uh, Mo was always open. She was engaging and she was a people's person. She knew the peace could not be made by not talking to people or by allowing vacuums uh, to emerge. Uh, I should say, and not drawing any analogy with anything, every time there was a political vacuum in Northern Ireland, every time politicians, and I'm not saying they were wrong, they were doing what they thought was right uh, at the time, but every time there was a, a vacuum, every time there was not an effort to talk, more people died. Every time the talks broke down, you can be sure that the first and second and third items in the news was the latest atrocity. Uh, the latest pastor or priest um, preaching about what they said at the funeral mass this morning, uh, the latest bomb that had gone off, and the latest innocent person uh, that had been gone down in cold blood. And uh, as happened in Northern Ireland, the tit for tat killing, and when you couldn't get an easy target, you went out looking for a couple like themselves, uh, fellow and girl leaving university campuses or leaving a bar in the north uh, and you shot the fella in front of the girl because that was an easy target and you knew who was a Catholic or a Protestant because we're going back into one of the areas and it was assumed that that's where you were. And that's the way life went on. And if you don't talk and if you don't deal and if you don't negotiate uh, like Mo did, uh, that is uh, the outcome in my view. She made a huge impact on ordinary people, both in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland. People had never been, seen anyone quite like her as Secretary of State's General. 